Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of our series of building a neural network from scratch. If you haven't watched part one already, go ahead and take a look. It kind of sets up the motivation for what we're trying to do and why. And it also gives you some important information on how neural networks work. So let's jump right in. So we're going to be building a neural network to process the data set of uh, handwritten images. And if you're not familiar with it, this is a training set of 60,000 examples with labels of the digits 0 through 9. They are represented as 28 by 28 uh, matrices of uh, grayscale digits and um, is kind of a benchmark sort of data set for machine learning algorithms. And you find it by doing a quick Google search for Yama Kun's website, or just do MNIST database of handwritten digits, and it should pop right up. So you download four different files of training images and labels, as well as the test images and labels. It's not too large, just a few hundred megabytes. Um, and you want to download that directly into your working directory. That makes addressing the files a little bit easier. Now there is a catch to this, so when we read files typically we deal with text files, right? We are reading in text even text representations of numbers. In this case we're dealing with actual bytes, so we're going to have to do a little bit of work to get this into a form that we can actually work with. And so this video is going to deal strictly with uh, acquiring the data and processing it, and then we'll do some visualization so you can see what it looks like. But if you take a look at their page, they give us some um, benchmarks, so test error rates for various algorithms. We won't get to actually running the network in this video, but down the line we'll be able to compare our numbers to these and see how we do. The important thing to know is that this data is stored as byte files, and so we are going to need to do some transformations. And luckily they give us some information on how the file is laid out. You can see that the training set label files have a couple of offset integers, 32-bit integers or 4 bytes, that's represented by this offset of four here, and they tell you the magic number and number of items. We're going to treat these two as throwaways because we're not going to use them for anything, but we do have to uh, peek into the file and move past this data. And then the actual data is represented as unsigned bytes, so just eight bits. And likewise, for the training set image files, there are four different 32-bit integers at the beginning of the file that we're going to have to read in. And we will use the number of images for that because we're going to have to take that 28 by 28 array and flatten it into a row vector. So this should be pretty straightforward, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to need something called struct to handle the transformation from the byte files into Python bytes. And I'll show you the documentation on that in a moment. And we're also going to be using NumPy because all these operations are going to be performed on NumPy arrays. And we're going to want to uh, visualize the data. And so we're going to want to import matplotlib.pyplot. So if you don't have any of these, you can just do pip install say matplotlib and I already have it so you know I'm not installing anything but if you didn't have it just doing pip install would install that package for you and same thing with numpy you should already have a struct in OS though so first we want to download uh, sorry define a function to load in our data. And we're not going to be using an object-oriented approach to this because we're not going to be doing any real expansion of this later. We're just going to do this all straight procedural style code. So as usual with open and we'll start with our label files. The training labels, ah, if I could type today that would be helpful. Now since we are reading in bytes, we have to do rb because we're reading binary data, and we're going to call this labels. And as I said, we have to read the first two 32-bit integers in the file. Let's call it magic n, and we're going to use the struct, fun uh, the struct object to do that. And I'll show you the syntax for this in a second. And we want to read 8 bytes. 
So let's take a look at the documentation for struct. So it's a module that performs conversions between Python values and C structs represented as Python bytes objects. Used for handling binary data stored in files or from network connections, among other sources. So that's exactly what we're dealing with. We're dealing with binary data in a file. And so we want to actually unpack this data. And we have to use this funny syntax right here. And what this is doing is it is telling it it is in big endian. And the reason we need to do that is because of the way that the MNIST data is stored. So it is stored uh, in a format that is consistent with non-Intel processors. I'm using an Intel processor, so I have to flip the bytes of the header into big endian. And that's why I need this greater than sign here. And then the two I's indicate, capital I's indicate that I'm reading two unsigned integers. And we also want to pack it so let's do a search for unpack really quick. Um, the uh, Where is the syntax? I'm not seeing struct.unpack, so format and buffer. So our buffer is just labels.read, um, just eight bits, the first, uh, sorry, eight bytes of the, of the data file. And so now that we have advanced into the data file, we are actually able to start accessing the data we really want, which is the unsigned bytes that represent our labels. So then we just dump this into something called train labels, and we want to store it as a numpy array from file labels, and these are unsigned integers of 8 bits. And that's all there is to it. Now let's go ahead and open up the training images which we'll do, we'll have to do some similar trickery. Again, we want to read in binary mode, and we'll just call it images. Now, in this case, we have four bytes we have to read. In other words, four 32-bit integers. And we're going to actually use the number of images because we have to take the 28 by 28 matrix and flatten it into a 784, which is 28 times 28, a 784 element row vector and our training set structure will be just a matrix of these row vectors so let's do this and rows and calls now we have to switch to big endian again but we're reading four instead of two and we're going to want to read 16 instead of eight and we want train images equal mp from file images v type equal numpy uint 8. But we want to reshape this. As I said, we've got to flatten it into the number of rows, which is the number of images, and 784 columns. And then this is all of the heavy lifting. We just repeat the same thing for the test data. So I'm just going to copy, paste, and these are T10K instead of train, and we want whoop, test instead of train. But the data is laid out exactly the same, so we don't have to copy all of that again. And then we want to return training images, training labels, test images, test labels. And so that is all that is really required to load the data into a usable form. So that isn't particularly useful and I want to show you how this data actually looks. So we're going to use another function. We're going to call it visualize data and we're going to load it an image array and a label array. And so we're going to use matplotlib to do this. So we'll say fig ax equals plot.subplots. And let's take an 8 by 8 uh, image, uh, sorry, plot. 
and these are going to share the x and y axes. Now let's take a look at the first 64 images, which is of course number of rows times number of columns. And we're going to want to find where, um, we'll pick a number, let's say we want to take a look at the nines first. And remember, recall that we flattened this into a 784 element array, so we want to reshape this back into its 28 by 28 image representation. And we want to show this, and you can use different um, color maps, I'll just use gray, and some interpolation, and very important, you want to show the plot outside of the for loop. <laughs> You definitely don't want to put the plot into the for loop, you'll get a mess. So that is all we really need to get rolling. So let's say we want to take a look at this data. So train x, train y, where x is our images and y is our labels. Test x, test y, equal load data. So now we have our our data and now let's go ahead and visualize that data and we'll look at the training set. Alright now let's see what we get. Oh we get a error so it says read of closed file. What have I done? Oh no! Line 11 as images train dash images. Oh, that's why. Images dot read. I was trying to read a closed file, which is labels, right? <laughs> of course, that won't work. And I probably did something similar because I just copied and pasted. Of course. Images, labels, images, okay. And it is thinking. And here is our set of nines. And you can see there is a fair amount of variation. Some of them even look like G's. This one kind of looks like an eight. And so that's where the error in our neural network is gonna come from. Images that are a little bit ambiguous and can kind of look like other things. This one almost looks like a seven, for instance. And so I expect our neural network is going to have a little bit of work for itself. Let's take a look at some of the other numbers. Let's say, I don't know, 7. And see how that looks. So the 7s have a similar story. What's interesting is the variation in the way people write the number 7. Some people put a slash through it. Others don't. Uh, this one kind of looks like, um, I don't know, just a squiggle. So it'll be interesting to see how the neural network handles this. So we're running a little bit long, so I'm going to go ahead and chop it here. In our next set of videos, we're going to get into programming the actual basis for the neural network. We'll talk about the activation functions, encoding, as well as encoding the labels into a one-hot representation. And I look forward to seeing you in that next video. If you like this, go ahead and leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next part in our series.